So to, to honor him and honor his legacy by recording SOS, um, I felt there was no other answer. And your song is called SOS. Can you hear me, SOS? Help me put my mind to rest. What was it like emotionally working on this? I don't know of another artist at his level with so many fans that would be willing to say the things that he's saying in this record. I don't need my drugs. I don't need my drugs. We could be more than just part-time lovers. That's the most important line I've heard in the music business uh, in the past few years. In many American cities, there's a growing crisis of homelessness. The highest rates are on the West Coast. Suffering one of the worst problems is Seattle, home of the high-tech boom in a city once considered a jewel. Stork trial now underway in Oklahoma. It is the nation's first trial against drug maker giant Johnson & Johnson that critics blame for contributing to the nation's opioid crisis. In a case that could affect more than 1,800 other pending lawsuits. The worst man-made public health crisis in the history of our country. Well, looking at the broader picture, we've heard of similar problems in other places, Los Angeles, San Francisco, but we're now starting to hear about homeless crises in places like on the East Coast of Florida, for example, where you didn't hear of it much before. Um, what's the commonality? Is it just getting worse all over? The commonality is a, is a numbness, I think. I think commonality is not understanding that this is an addiction crisis not a homeless crisis, not a housing crisis. This is that subset I was talking about. It's about addiction. Where we've seen drugs take the lives of, uh, of so many um, artists and then the fans of artists, the yeah. people who are paying attention and, and using the music and the lifestyle around the music to suggest to them how they should process. Officers call it the deadliest drug on our streets. Now they're finding fentanyl in the valley more than ever before. Tonight, a new undercover bust. ABC 15's Zach Crenshaw spoke with the analysts in the Phoenix Crime Lab who are calling what they're seeing unprecedented. It's a drug 50 times more potent than heroin. And doctors say just touching it can send you to the emergency room. We're talking about the synthetic opioid fentanyl. The I-Team found that it's not only dangerous, but contributes to a frightening spike in deaths in L.A. County. Phoenix PD's forensic scientist supervisor, Roger Schneider, is not surprised. It went from being a weekly occurrence to now uh, multiple times a day we are testing fentanyl items in the laboratory. Well, Tony, the criminal investigation has been going on for about six months now. Husel was fired by his Columbus area hospital in December. Prosecutors say he gave excessive amounts of painkillers to the patients over the course of three years. The charges form one of the biggest murder cases ever brought against a U.S. healthcare professional. This breach of a doctor's oath is vile and worthy of today's actions and that begins the process of holding this accused killer criminally accountable. Oklahoma's case is just the first of almost 2,000 lawsuits brought by states, local municipalities and Native American tribes. This then is an important test case for the entire nation. If lawyers here can prove a multi-billion dollar company like Johnson & Johnson played a role in the opioid crisis, the ramifications could be huge. And two of the three companies that Oklahoma sued, Purdue Pharma and Teva Pharmaceuticals, have already settled out of court with no admission of wrongdoing. And as a direct result of that, Seattle is now a haven for homelessness and drug use. Now, the documentary by the local news station Como warns of the consequences. Normal middle class people cannot live in Seattle anymore because the city is dying. The city mayor doesn't give the cops authority. That's the problem. This is one of the most beautiful regions in the entire world and right now, with lack of a better word, it looks like shit. It's infuriating. Every camp I walk into there was a weapon. Multiple weapons. I found modified weapons. I was constantly on the side of the road talking to people that were swinging machetes. I have not met anyone else on the street who's not in some 
phase of addiction. You know, they asked the question as to whether or not Seattle is dying. Not only is Seattle dying, but we've got a bunch of leaders who are letting it die. You've got a council and a mayor's office that is playing politics. They're being ideological. They go after anyone like me who happens to say, hey, maybe we should be helping these people, putting them into treatment, putting them into housing. But they say, well, we would just be inconveniencing them, that it's not compassionate to move them from site to site. I'm sorry, it's not compassionate to let them live like this. Your compassion no, is killing them. No, and they're drug addicts. So it sounds like your mayor doesn't care about Seattle at all. Opioids take a hold of you, and it's extremely hard for people to overcome that. Emily and thousands of other families are now watching closely as the opioid crisis is on trial in Oklahoma, accusing them of executing massive and unprecedented marketing campaigns, misrepresenting the risks of addiction and making billions of dollars in profit. Money can make people and businesses do bad things, very bad things. The opioid crisis has already claimed countless victims over the last two decades and continues to blight the lives of millions. Pharmaceutical companies claim they're not responsible, but courts across the U.S. are now primed to hold them to account. Out of Washington, D.C., where a man set himself on fire outside the White House. This is video from social media. We're not showing you the intense flames that engulfed the man because it's simply too graphic. This is what happened in the minutes after that. Crews rushed him to the hospital, but U.S. Park Police are not releasing his condition. This is the second incident like this in a month. Back in April, a man in an electric scooter lit his jacket on fire near the White House fence. The National Park Service says it is now handing the investigation over to D.C. police. Smoking the synthetic cannabis known as Spice, Artis Medina Kuchinova reports on the horrifying effect of the high. A deadly mix of herbs coated in chemicals, which is then smoked, is turning into a new scourge for Russia. I remember the feeling it gave me. After some sort of euphoria, I was drowning in a wave of paranoia. This synthetic mix is not something new. In fact, other countries have struggled with the problem for a number of years. It emerged in the U.S. in 2010, known as bath salt. It had a reputation for turning people into zombies. A gruesome scene in Miami. It became notorious in 2012 when a user randomly attacked a homeless person in Miami trying to eat his face. The authorities blamed the effects of bath salt. In the middle of America's opioid crisis, there is a new wave of drug overdoses. This time it's linked to synthetic marijuana, also known as K2. The drug is often made to look like marijuana, but it's a mix of chemicals sprayed on herbs or plants. Intense spotlight on drugs at music festivals has not deterred our youth. 16 people have been charged with supply this weekend, among them a nutritionist, and one accused dealer is aged just 13. But outside court, the 23-year-old had his own solution. What do you want to say about the drug issue at festivals, Billy? They should do, they should do pill testing because I think it's coloured pills which kill. Cyric was one of 20,000 attending the Ultra Music Festival yesterday at Parramatta Park. Police searched 395 people and found drugs on one in four. Ten others rushed to hospital suspected of overdosing. Burgling, better known as Avicii, first started getting noticed with his 2011 hit Levels. But he's probably best known for breaking down walls between musical genres. His 2013 mega hit Wake Me Up redefined what a dance track could be. So wake me up when it's all over. When I'm wiser and I'm older.
What was it like emotionally working on this? When I saw the title of the song, it just it brought back all the emotions of, of the day you get the phone call that Tim passed. Like, why am I getting the SOS now? You know, it's months after. Like, I wanted the SOS months before. I don't know of another artist at his level with so many fans that would be willing to say the things that he's saying in this record. And then something like this happens and it's been a really, really emotional and hard puzzle to solve. How, how do you do this? You know, in the, in the middle of us making this album, I would always complain to him and I'd be like, Tim, did you write another sad song? And he would say, dude, I know. I'm working on a happy one. I'll give you a good fist pumper. We'll do that. I'm on it. We're, it's coming next. Uh, what can I say? I just keep writing these songs. And I look back on it now and I'm crushed because even me, who was hearing everything he was doing, you just, you just didn't know, right? You didn't, that Tim, that idea, he gives it to you in plain sight. He, it was hiding in plain sight. I think in the song titles alone, I think with this album you'll hear, you'll hear Tim, and not so much Avicii, who is, you know, the god of of uh, the big festival or the nightclub banger. It's it's the man. This is what they're not teaching you in success programs. This is what they're not, they're not teaching you this in college, or in business programs, or business degrees, or whatever, right? They're not teaching you this. You gotta be it, then do it to have it. You gotta be the millionaire right now. Now, see now, some confusion, right? Like, well, what do you mean, what? I don't have any money, I'm broke. How much does it cost to have a smile on your face? Zero dollars. It costs zero dollars. If you was a multi-millionaire, wouldn't you be smiling all the time? Like if you had $100,000 that was coming into your bank account or $10,000 that were coming into your bank account every single month, wouldn't you be smiling? You gotta apply it, you gotta do it. If you don't do it, understand that you got 80% of people, they hear this stuff, they listen to this stuff and they don't do nothing with it. I hope that's not you. Six years ago, when no one knew who I was, six years ago, I decided to be the guy